When I was in high school, I had a hobby people thought was strange. My parents feared it. They saw it as dangerous. My friends, at the other hand, found it really boring. My hobby was, I'm not even sure how to explain it, like getting lost on purpose. You see, uh, it all started in my junior year of high school. My school was at the opposite side of the city, so it took me an hour and a half to get there changing trams and buses, and that's per travel. So I had to spend three hours of traveling every single day to my school and back home. And it was exciting the first week. <laughs> After that, it got really boring. And hey, it was during the years where only the rich kids had mobile data on their phones. So without internet, without YouTube, and outside of pirating Disney shows on my phone, I had to think of ways how to entertain myself. And that's where I found these extraordinary objects called books. <laughs> now, I fell in love with reading. I fell in love with reading. But I never found the classics that interesting. You know, Shakespeare, Tolstoy, Hemingway were not in my backpack. Maybe you can tell. But I fell in love with, I fell in love with reading. That's everything under the travel and adventure genre. Maybe because my family was not financially able to uh, organize any family vacations abroad. I actually haven't traveled by plane before I was 21. So reading all of these adventure novels was my way of traveling to foreign places, foreign continents, expeditions, ships, captains, jungles, all while being on the bus on my way to school. And reading about these books, reading about these adventures, you see, I wanted to feel them. I wanted to taste them. I wanted to live with them. But what could I do? I was 10th grade. I didn't even have a passport. <laughs> so the wildest thing for me, the most craziest adventure I could think of were trains. Now, we're currently in Austria. The trains here are not like the trains back home. I can live in the trains here. In the trains back home, I would rather not. And don't get me wrong, they're not dangerous to ride in. You know, they're just a bit smelly and shaky and not on time if they ever come. But I love traveling with them. I find them so romantic. It is my adventure. So what I did was this. What my hobby was, was this. I took an early morning train every free weekend I got from Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria where I live, to another big city. But I didn't stop at the big city. I stopped in a random village station in the middle of nowhere, with, without much of a plan. Then I spent the whole day talking with the local strangers, meeting them, hearing their stories. And then I came back home with the last train and a notebook full of stories. These were my expeditions. Little did I know, that was just the start of something big, something way bigger than me. When I turned 19, I got a crazy idea. Why travel without a plan just for a day? What will happen if I do it for a whole summer? You know, whole summer of traveling without any plan, without knowing where you're going to sleep, what you're going to eat, who you're going to meet, what are you even going to do? How would an adventure like this look like? I wanted to find out. I'm going to do it, I said to myself. And I did it. I spent more than a month with two of my best friends traveling to the most rural villages in Bulgaria. And that trip changed my life. You know, the, the beauty, the people I met. Like that guy. That's Kiro. He's the mayor of a village called Konduvo. That village is just with seven people. <laughs> yeah. It's so high in the mountain that there's no phone signal. And that guy used to be an ex-military radio specialist. And having a village that high with no phone signal means that there's no radio signal as well. And with just a handful of people in the village, 
It used to be a dead silence. It used to be. But when Kiru got elected, even though he was the only candidate, <laughs> he spent two years building a DIY custom radio station so that the seven people that are left there can hear and listen to their favorite songs that are on the radio or any songs that are on the radio and not feel like they're disconnected from the outside world. Or that grandma living in her wooden hut without electricity, who charged her phone once a week by the local postman who comes by with a power bank. <laughs> yeah. Or that old lady, she was digging potatoes under the scorching summer heat. It turned out that the field was actually not hers. Uh, she was stealing the potatoes. <laughs> we were helping her. <laughs> yeah. That's another story. <laughs> or that grandpa, Dimo, who had half of his field wiped out by storms. And he didn't let us leave without filling our backpacks with vegetables, tomatoes, fruits. Why? Because we reminded him of his grandkids, who he has never seen. You know, this adventure, it really showed me that there is beauty in places where people usually pass it by. You know, the beauty of the simple life that we've somehow lost in the cities, the beauty of the untold stories. And when I did this trip, I was still studying in my university, film directing. So we filmed everything, then I cut it down, I uploaded it on YouTube, and it blew up. It was like a feature, uh, whole, whole feature film, and it blew up. It has more than two and a half million views, which for Bulgaria, a country with seven million people, that means that almost every third person in Bulgaria has seen it or heard about it. But more than the views, more than the likes, the shares, the opportunities, more than that, what really moved me was when people message me or stop me on the streets, people I don't know, complete strangers, even years after the film had its moment, saying, because of you, because of your film, I decided to move back home. Or your film was the last drop in my cup to make me take the decision to move back to Bulgaria. You see, Bulgaria is one of the poorest countries in the European Union. A lot of young people, they don't see future in it. Actually, that's the mindset some parents raise their kids, you know. I even had teachers who advised me to move out and run away and never look back. But that's not what the captains in the novels I was reading about would have done, even if it's a sinking ship. And all of a sudden, not only I was not leaving the ship, but there were more people coming, more sailors coming to help and rebuild it every single day. And it is happening, and it is beautiful. And I can't even find words to describe how grateful I am that now there's a whole generation that's watching the culture that we are trying to build with the people around me, and that we have the rare opportunity to make the entertainment that the, the next 17-year-old youth in Bulgaria will watch and experience on their long journey to school. But I have a secret. My secret is that in almost everything I do, I don't know really what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I feel a bit lost. Not that I'm not focused, I mean, I know where my direction is, but I'm not really sure what I'm doing right now. And, you know, when was the last time you felt lost? You know, you think you have everything figured out, and suddenly the signs changed. The wind blows, south is east, east is west, north is east, you know, everything mixed up, and all of a sudden you're lost. When was the last time you felt lost? And this time I'm not asking about traveling. I'm asking about life. Maybe you've been in that season or you're currently going through it where you don't know, you know, the, the places you feel safe. You don't know where the shore is for you. 
and where's the shore for you, I don't know. But what I know is that there's beauty in being lost. There's beauty in that season. Where's the beauty? You may ask. Well, where's the beauty of the mundane, of the routine? Where's the beauty of knowing everything? Where's the beauty of planning it all? Where's the beauty of living your life the same over and over and over again? Where's the beauty in being lost, you may ask? Can I ask you all to close your eyes? All of you. Thank you. I want you to picture a memory so happy that makes you so happy for the past one year. Something that makes you joyful, something that gives you peace. It may be a memory of finding love, it may be becoming a parent, or just hanging out with someone somewhere, something that made you happy. Just picture that moment and stay there. Now, with your eyes closed, can you raise your hand if that moment was not planned? If it was something that someone invited or just happened, can you raise your hand? Now open your eyes, look around. You see, life is unpredictable. And I know that thought is so scary. But it's also so beautiful. Because when you're lost, life teaches you stuff. It teaches you to be focused. You have to think, how did I get here? And more importantly, where is it that I want to go? It teaches you to trust to know that you will be found. And I know, I'm sure, you will. And it teaches you to change. You know, when I came back from that summer trip in the villages, I went into my room, and it was really strange because uh, there was something different. But it was strange because my, my bed was the same as I left it, you know, my clothes were the same, my shoes were the same, my posters, everything in the room was the same, but somehow there was something different. And then I realized the thing that was different in the room was me. There's beauty in being lost. Because when you're lost, you lose who you were to find who you are. Thank you for having me.